Here in the States, it's fall, which means spooky season. So let's get in the character, shall we? They say that in space, no one can hear you scream. You know the other time no one can hear you scream? When you're wearing a high quality pair of active or adaptive noise canceling earbuds. Now, based on my attire, you may think that I'm set to take on an armada of Imperial TIE Fighters. You're only half wrong. I'm going to take on an armada of some of the second half of 2021's best and most anticipated active noise canceling earbuds. And by the way, at the end of this video, my hope is that you'll know which is right for you. So buckle up, Buttercup, and let's get to these battle-tested buds. The holiday season is upon us, so this roundup is meant to give you a, a clear picture of what's on offer here so you can make an informed purchasing decision for yourself, a friend or loved one. This won't be an exhaustive review because for five earbuds, that would be an hour long video. Trust me, I even rewrote this script because I tend to go long and, and I needed to pare it down. I will absolutely cover features and experiences which I think may matter most to your phone calling, music and movie watching, and working out. Let's get into it beginning with this disclaimer. For many of you, this is your first time watching one of my reviews, so I have to repeat what I've said in other earbuds and IEM reviews. I have embarrassingly small ear canals, so many buds are uncomfortable for me because the posts, the tips are connected to are a bit large. So fit and finish, let's, let's start there. Uh, these earbuds are all between $150 and $300, so you'd expect the fit and finish to be on par with those price points, and they actually are. I have today the Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds, the Sony WF-1000XM4s, the OnePlus Buds Pro, the Jabra Elite 7 Pro, and Beats brand spanking new Beats Fit Pro, which just dropped. And like the previous Beats Studio 3 are wooing Android users with their Android app and relative feature parity between iOS and Android. All of the units come with the usual three pairs of ear tips for a good fit and use either silicone tips or in the case of the Sony's, you get polyurethane foam tips, which I tend to prefer over silicon ear tips for how they hold up once you get sweaty and don't have over ear hooks. Given the rest of the earbuds are late 2021, you may be wondering why the Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds are included in this roundup. Simple. Since we're talking top ANC buds, I thought it important to include them for reference as they are generally regarded, depending on who you talk to, as the top or second best behind Sony. Also, while we're talking fit and finish, they have the nicest case here of the bunch with a spring-loaded lid which opens with the press of a button and closes with a satisfying click. They look and feel like the Rolls-Royce of wireless earbuds and Frankly, I'd be scared to use them in the gym or biking for fear of scuffing their aesthetic perfection. The Sony's don't have that spring-loaded lid, but do have the strongest magnets of the lot. I mean, real strong, almost annoyingly so, as it can be an ordeal to get them out sometimes if you don't grab them right. Hashtag first world problems. The good news is you'll never worry about them accidentally falling out of the case and Speaking of cases, all of these are wireless charging compatible and charge via USB-C. Yes, even the Beats. You'll get fast charging here. Bose, 15 minutes gets you 120 minutes of playtime. Sony, five minutes for 60 minutes of playtime. Jabra, around an hour with five minutes. Beats, five minutes gets you around an hour. And OnePlus Buds, they have the most impressive fast charging with their warp charge. That'll get you 10 hours of listening for 10 minutes of charge time in the case. All of the earbuds can be used in mono mode interchangeably, except for the Bose, which have mics only in the right earbud. So if you're going to use only one and still have access to making phone calls, keep that in mind. Now, in terms of connectivity, I'm going to place all of the codec information in the video's description. But I'll say this of the earbuds featured here. 
The Sonys are the only ones which feature multi-point connectivity or the ability to be connected to two devices simultaneously. While Beats do support device switching on iOS and OnePlus has said that a firmware update will support what they call dual connection coming in the future with no ETA at last check of their user form. Let's talk user experience. I found all five of these earbuds to be relatively easy to get into my ears. The easiest of the five being Jabra Elite 7 Pro and the OnePlus Buds Pro, mainly because the Jabras are so small and light, essentially just pushing and seating them into the ear canal and the OnePlus Buds Pro because they're built very similar to AirPods and kind of just sit in the ear. The Sonys are large and you're going to want to give them a nice intentional push and twist as you seat them, maybe even squishing the foam tips prior to seating them so they expand in your ear. Both the Bose and the Beats have ear tips with wings, so as you seat them, you want to be sure they seat properly, placing the wings against the rook of your ear as the unit sits inside the conch. I know I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I Googled parts of the year before writing this. Saved you a trip. You're welcome. I won't go too deep into comfort because I think everyone has a different preference and it's also gonna be based on your use case. Personally, I prefer units which can stand up to sweat and dynamic motion. In other words, I need something which holds up to workouts and doesn't feel like it's going to fall out of my ear when things get sweaty. That's why, to this day, honestly, my favorite pair of earbuds have been Powerbeats Pro on iOS or Android, either one. It's the ear hooks. During workouts, though, I will say that all five of these felt pretty stable in ear. The OnePlus Buds Pro probably felt the most like they were going to fall out, but they didn't. Long-term wear comfort for me and my small ear canals was best with the Jabras and the Beats. After a time, I forgot I was wearing them. None of them were uncomfortable by any stretch, but the presence of the others in my ears over long periods never went away. Now, you may actually use your phone as a phone, right? Or maybe you're going to make Google Duo calls or use them for Zoom. Let's get to those mic tests. Yes, there will be mic tests. Note that the Sony's Jabra's and Beats all utilize some form of vibration pickup or bone conduction pickup sensor in conjunction with microphones along with software algorithms in order to isolate your voice from background noise. So the other day my wife suggested that I go play in traffic and I thought that's a really good idea. So I have all five of the Bluetooth headsets here, the earpieces, the earbuds, and I'm in traffic or I'm adjacent to it and I'm going to do a microphone test using the Pixel 6 Pro uh, connected via Bluetooth to all of these devices. And so first up, I have the Beats Fit Pro. Uh, these are what it's going to sound like if you're outdoors in the middle of traffic, uh, plenty of construction noise, and we have a little, actually have a little bit of wind uh, going on here. So I have wind, I have construction, I have traffic. This is what your microphone, this is what your conversations are going to sound like. And next up, we have Jabra's Elite 7 Pro. Uh, now, the cool thing about the Elite 7 Pro is in their app, you can actually EQ your call quality and they have a default setting, a more bass or a more treble setting. So if you want to have that bedroom sexy bass voice, that Barry White going on, you can actually play with those mic audio settings. And now, still seated in the same place, I am using Sony's WF-1000XM4 Super Hyper Ultimate Ultra Space no, it's just the 1000 XM4s. There is still a ton of traffic, cars, construction, all that's still going on. And actually the wind just picked up a little bit. Um, so there you go. This is what your microphone's on your Sony uh, WF-1000 XM4 uh, Bluetooth active noise canceling your buds sound like. What do you think? Would you be willing to take a phone call outdoors among the urban elements 
with Bose's QC uh, Quiet Comfort earbuds? I don't know. I uh, I can't tell because I haven't listened back to the audio yet, and uh, we'll we'll see. Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds. And here we go. Last but not least, I have the One Plus Buds Pro. So still in the same place, still out here among a ton of traffic. Uh, no wind at this moment, but still plenty of construction going on over here. Traffic is halted and the green light just went, and now traffic is taken off. So there should be more noise from that. Uh, we are definitely uh, experiencing the urban environment and all of its urban jungle noises, uh, which are from all the metal beasts roaming about. I really like the beats here most. I couldn't hear the construction noise at all, and they had a solid amount of wind blowing in them at the time. So kudos to them for that engineering. Then I think the Jabra's followed by Sony, then OnePlus, then Bose. Let me know in the comments after listening to these mic comparisons, which ones you liked the best, which ones you thought sounded the cleanest to you. But what about the noise canceling? This is after all a roundup of noise canceling earbuds. I, I used simulated airplane cabin noise at 78 decibels. In other words, loud, as well as coffee shop ambiance and New York subway sound. OnePlus allowed in the most high frequency. Experientially, the Bose noise canceling felt less fatiguing on my ears due to the shape design. You know, it didn't have as much sucking, that sucking feeling. But the Sony's definitely canceled the most noise in the low and high frequency because of their tech, but also because of those foam ear tips. They really do a good job of passive noise cancellation, augmenting the overall effect of the active cancellation. For me, the most comfortable of the five for longer periods of wear were the Jabra's and Beats, followed by the Bose, then Sony, then OnePlus. So what about actually listening to music? I streamed through Tidal, Method Man's Ultra Muddy Bass Heavy Biscuits, and the impressive Dolby Atmos remix of The Doors, Riders on the Storm, and Isaac Hayes' Shafting, played locally on my Note 20 Ultra, my flak file of Paul Simon's immaculately produced Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes, and rounded out the experience with Disney Plus apps, Thor Ragnarok, which supports Dolby Atmos playback. Playing Biscuits, the Bose Quiet Comfort had no distortion at max volume and had more clarity than the OnePlus Buds Pro. The Sonys were able to handle all of that muddiness, but the vocals weren't as forward as Bose. But like the Bose, there was no distortion at high volumes despite all that bass. Beats Fit Pro held their own against the pricier Sonys, which had more presence of clarity, but Biscuits never distorted, even at max volume with Beats. Jabra was also able to handle Biscuits at max volume with no distortion, but like Beats weren't as vocal forward as Sony. With Riders on the Storm, Sony again had the most impressive reproduction. It was immersive and magical. The Bose Quiet Comfort had impressive clarity in the keyboards at the top of the song, but just didn't have the same delivery as Sony. One note, with Bose, get used to the audio dipping when you increase volume via the capacitive touch right earbud. The Bose really do have uh, impressive clarity though. Hayes Shaft theme song, title master tracks, instrumentation was so layered and just felt like it was in my head. I mean, really immersive. With the Sony's, the sound stage is large and my flak files were still bright and nuanced, streamed over Bluetooth compression. Paul Simon's Diamonds on the Soles of His Shoes had a great sound stage on the beats as well, though Paul Simon's vocals teetered just at the edge of being too bright and running into some sibilance when listening at max volume. Bringing volume to normal listening levels, they were just fine, and that sibilance issue was resolved, and you shouldn't actually, for long periods of time, be listening at max volume anyway. So it's kind of moot, but you just needed to know what they can handle under extreme conditions. Beats really has gone a long way over the years to creating a more balanced sound. It really is good. The Jabras, which often have one of my favorite sound profiles and truly wireless earbuds with their 75Ts and 85Ts, fared well. 
Biscuits had no distortion at max levels. Paul Simon was handled delightfully, even at max level. His volumes were bright, but nowhere pushing into sibilance territory. The Atmos mix of Riders of the Storm, though it sounded delightful, didn't quite have the presence that the Sonys did. But this is a game of inches at this level. The difference in audio quality is very nuanced between these five. If you aren't an audiophile, any one of these works quite well. And if you are an audiophile, you likely aren't listening over Bluetooth. Thor Ragnarok was a delight over all the earbuds here, but much like the music, the Sony's had the most presence, really bringing out the thuds and explosions in the movie's sound design without sacrificing clarity of the dialogue. And I experienced a bit of latency with the jobbers. Rounding out the user experience, the controls on the Jabras and Beats were the most intuitive and straightforward, uh, allowing you to control things from both earbuds, specifically with the Beats, they were identical. I tend to prefer mechanical buttons on wireless earbuds. Sometimes capacitive touch on earbuds can be quite finicky. Fortunately, that wasn't the case on the other three earbuds. All of them were pretty easy to operate, keeping in mind that the touch pads require you to hit the right spot to activate a function. The Bose had the greatest learning curve for functions with the Sony's being more straightforward. Audio pass-through is available on all of these earbuds. Sony had the best combination of music to background sound, allowing me to still play my music at audible levels while having that awareness of what was going on around me. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how much of my surroundings were let in, but that's thanks to the slider, which allows you to control the mix of street noise to music in the app. Out on the street, I could hear cars around me and music, but it wasn't sensitive enough to allow me to hear the footsteps of a jogger who ran up behind and past me. All of these buds have an app and they're all pretty good, though some have more features. Sony's app and Jabra's app both give you more granular control over the amount of noise cancellation and audio pass through than the others. And if you aren't quite sold on a sound profile, Sony, Jabra, and Bose apps all have EQ options. That's my full look. Thank you for watching. I don't take it lightly that you spent your time here with me. If you have any questions that I did not answer in this roundup, please go ahead, leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to check the video description for additional information on Codex and, and some of the, the details that I didn't uh, take the time to go through in this video. You'll find that stuff there. And again, you can always ask questions in the comments and I'll get to them. I'm Tashaka Armstrong for Android Central. I will check you out on the next video.